chores or kit chores. Well, mainly one chore to be done today. We are going to be dealing with the dendrobium of film cakeys again. It's the sign of the times. But before that, let's once again just enjoy the fruits of our labor and why we do these orchid chores because my blooming alley is where I enjoy the fruits of my labor. And <clears throat> we might as well start with the elephant in the room and that is my catlia durigan crucero do sul. Look at that beautiful, beautiful orchid. She smells like a bouquet of roses. So, so elegant and divine and pretty intense. She opened up three days ago. Pretty amazing. Very, very happy to see all the funky exotic spotting. So that is one elephant in the blooming alley. The other elephant in the blooming alley is Dendrobium hib. Vicky over here to your left. I thought I would get like a staggered blooming because all the canes that are from yesteryear are blooming out on the nodes that they hadn't bloomed out before. So when the clusters started to develop, I thought, yeah, okay, we'll park this blooming, we'll take it aside and know that next year with all the canes that have matured since, that we will get ourselves a beautiful spectacle again. <clears throat> I am very happy to admit I was wrong. This is sensational. As much as I like this hot pink all bunched up together, one node on top of each other, the separation of these clusters is giving me a better appreciation of the blooms and they actually have space to spread out. Fragrance wise I still have one elephant in my blooming alley and that would be my Prostechia cochleata variety Lancifolia. Not much of an elephant anymore but the blooms that this orchid has left are still very very fragrant. Next to that though Dendrobium sutkinoi is still in bloom looking gorgeous and growing a new growth. These blooms have lasted well over four weeks. They are not fragrant at all. Oh, neither is the hibiki. And I have a real cutie in bloom as well, which I'm just going to show in images because if I move it, you can see how the light is a little bit difficult. I may be here faffing around trying to get it to focus. That is my Podangus dactyloceras. Oh, just so pretty with four spikes with those transparent, delicate, it looks like hand-blown glass blooms. Very, very cute and beautiful. The fourth spike just opened today, but the first spike that has opened has been opened two weeks, which is pretty amazing. Plenty more about this orchid in greater detail in Blooms For You feature videos. And she lives over there, tucked on the shelf over there in my line of sight straight away. If I move the camera around, we are going to be interfering with Stan the man up here. That's why the angle is the way it is. But at the far end, Tulumya, I have the golden fire in bloom. Best spike ever. Another video will be coming out because oopsie, we have been too complacent with the pest maintenance. So a video is coming out about Tulumnias and scale. Be on the lookout for that. At the far end, like tucked in behind the Durigan back there, I'll show you an image, is my first time bloomer, Panarica Brassavole. Very pretty blooms, very delicate in color, featuring that gorgeous lip which is the most striking part of the blooms. In Spike, I have its compadre right there. That is Panarica prismatocarpa there, so waiting for those blooms to open. And we'll do a feature video on that species as well. I still have Pinkton Bronze Age there in bloom, but oh, very tired blooms. I literally could cut those spikes off, just haven't gotten around to it. At the bottom of the screen there is my Phalaenopsis speciosa crossed with my Alacia. And then the buds that you see there are from Lady Chatterley, Cornu Servi variety Chatterley. That bud is actually blasting, but I have another bud coming and I'm hoping that that's going to make it. And all the way down here, speaking of one elephant in my blooming alley, taking over from the honeysuckle fragrance of my Cochleata variety Lancifolia is my Dendrobium antenatum. I learned my lesson last year. I had caterpillars chomp away all the spikes, bar one or two, but this year, garlic alcohol and no complacency kicked in and we have this gorgeous spectacle. Pretty amazing and that one is taking over from the Cochleata fragrance with a very similar heady, perfumey, honeysuckled burnt molasses fragrance. Absolutely delicious. These spikes have now been open approximately five to six days and I hope that they're going to be around for a long long time. 
right at the far end there almost forgot my epidendrum multiforme crossed with capricorn nu on its last legs with the spike of the season it was nice to pair up all the green and white that you see in the blooming alley with some green and white blooms <laughs> Oh yeah, and behind me, just to finish off the Blooming Alley theme, is my Dendrobium Seraula, which is opening more clusters. My old-time favorite, I don't feature it much because watering it on a mount, water getting onto the blooms, ruins the beauty of the blooms, so it's not one that I can show that often because I try to show my blooms when they look beautiful and perfect. And, well, that one hardly gets featured because it rarely looks beautiful and perfect. And then to be completely surrounded by blooms and perfect I also have my Neostylus Lucneri in bloom with its first spike. That's been open now over 10 days. There's a second spike on that Neostylus already, but from the first new fan it ever grew in my care. Happy days! My Neostylus is maturing to the point that soon we'll have plenty of spikes all in one go. Woohoo! That fragrance is gorgeous. It's got this vanilla hint during the day and then at night it takes over the Van der Falcata parrot fragrance and turns into a citrusy powdery delight. Delicious. And above that I have my Van der Rainbow Forest. It is a made up name. I am never entirely sure what that orchid is called, but I do not care. She is beautiful. She has got, for the time being that I can count 10 spikes going, two are already opening up nicely. But the keikis won't wait, the keikis need dealing with. So what I did today was cut off all the keikis that are available to me. Because even though it is the warmest month of the year, that is the reason they have to come off now, because it is the warmest month of the year. And I may not be able to keep up with keeping those roots going based on the warm, dry winds. I don't have enough humidity to keep up with the roots as they grow longer before they stop growing altogether. I need to get those keikis off and onto the monster mount. Every keiki that I cut, including the cane, I dipped into cinnamon just to seal the wound. And then I put all the keikis into a little Tupperware of water where they will be soaking for 24 hours. And then domani, mañana, we are going to be pinning them onto the monster mount so that the class of 2022 keikis are all combined up there. And then hopefully we can get them to grow on, eventually fulfilling the vision that I have in about four years to come. That's the plan, so let's get going. The powers of editing. All right, we've done this before. Hey, <laughs> whoop, hey. <laughs> We've done this before, but I do want to capture this footage because that is what orchid chores are about. There's a lot of rinse, repeat. Water, rinse, repeat. And I can have this documented for future reference, even for me to see how the progress is going. Up there, I have the Tupperware with the keikis that have been soaking overnight in a very, very weak solution of seaweed, but super weak. And some roots have greened up, which is wonderful because I'm hoping not to break too many or damage too many root tips. I am sorry about the harsh glare of the sun. I have to do this now and yeah, really do apologize. Maybe the angle isn't perfect either, but that is also because I don't want my camera equipment to heat up and shut down on me. So many variables today and I hope still that it will be of interest because I have cut on all of them part of the cane of the mother plant off 
hoping that it'll help me to have something to hold on to, grab onto, and pin onto the monster mount. And we are going to get going, at least with the ones in the Tupperware. And then there's one more I want to show you what I'm going to do because that's a little bit different. So let's get sewing. Now, I don't really have a definitive plan of which cakey goes where, but what I'm trying to do clearly is to fill the mount as best as possible and ideally protect the roots long term. At least they've had some sustenance. Now they are used to dry air. They are used to being misted. I doubt very much I need to put hob filter over the top of them. And of course, it would be nice if they were already touching the hob material to some degree without damaging the growth itself. So as I go through this, that is my thought process. I could also turn this cakey around like that. Uh, but it's coming very close to the next one. So there's plenty of options and the idea just being to fill them out where there's space and hopefully get it right and not lose a single one of them. Well, <laughs> I'm becoming an expert at this. I've made some serious progress, much faster than I thought. I almost thought, well, why didn't I film this in real time? <laughs> Hindsight, isn't it a wonderful world? So, right, I've got the biggest one with three keikis. I saved that for the end. I'm hoping everything is in focus. And my main focus is to make sure that I don't break the roots, but they are somehow touching the filter and I will not be needing to put any hob material over them in the end because yeah they have had the most water in the last 24 hours than they've had as in soaked continuously than they've had since they came to be so this is wet dry cycle kind of thing just keep them nice and wet seeing as now they're not on the mother plant anymore and they are in actual fact seedlings at this point in time but because i don't have to faff around with hob material <laughs> basically with the exception of this long one probably i just had to tie off one part of the cane seeing as they were little and move on to the next one so i figured i might as well film this last or these last two and show you how the progress is going even though some are going to be a bit whack and off, but they'll correct themselves eventually, probably in the coming year. And I just needed to tie this one off a second time because it's so long and it's got three of them. So if this grows well, it's going to be kind of weighty and I don't want it to like, you know, kink and fall off. And I need to keep concentrating as to what I'm doing. <laughs> and not just talk and get distracted. But yeah, the mount is looking pretty full. I know that there is probably space for another batch, but the more the little keikis grow as they are already on the mount, the more, of course, it's gonna be of a fiddle to get more keikis on there. But we're gonna give it a shot for as long as it takes. So this was the largest one with three keikis situated and established. Sorry if my hand keeps cutting across the screen. I'm sorry. All right, and I still have this little cakey, which I'm going to put down here underneath, maybe another way around. This is what I've been doing with all of them, just checking positions. I don't mind if they're going all willy-nilly all over the place. That'll correct itself eventually, but it might be good to have one right at the end here to see what happens. But what I wanted to show you while I've got you and while the camera is still <laughs> not hot, let's have a look-see. You see this one? This one has a teeny tiny new growth right at the base, but it doesn't seem to be 
growing because it's focusing on this one and this cane is pretty desiccated so what i'm going to do is take the opportunity and just pin this keiki while still attached to the cane somewhere over here or over here it doesn't really matter the point is to get these roots into some water because i can't cut this off the keiki is too small and won't make it now with my other keikis i've been pushing roots into the hub material where feasible like you know feeding them into there that was what i was trying to do with the others and that worked out really well and of course for demonstration purposes it's like yeah we're not going to behave <laughs> So I can still fiddle around with that when I've got the keiki attached. Let's focus on the first thing first and get it attached. And I do have roots from other keikis and new growths growing all over the place. So I've been trying to take that into consideration as well. But it's all fun and games. This has been so much easier than the first ones that I pinned just because of the hob material not having to go over the top. And it almost makes me feel like maybe I should build another monster mount. No, just kidding. Stop it, Nina. Concentrate and focus. But yeah, we're going to take advantage of that cane. Keep the cakey up a bit. and tie it off. Who needs a third hand? <laughs> I don't. And that's going to lift that hob material up. That's interesting. But it's not a problem. Because even if this one little cakey takes and starts a new growth, eventually all the roots are going to go into the main body of the mount and, well, hob material will be history and if i ever do get a bit concerned i will pin it to the rest of the mount but that's not necessary at this stage and we have one more left which is going to go right down here just touch my equipment we're okay where's my needle scooch you over a little bit like that And watch the roots at the top of the other keiki. And I believe this one I only need to tie off once. And if you heard something in the background, that was King yawning. <laughs> and I am not taking that personally at all. <laughs> because this is a bendy downy keiki right here. I'm going to secure it right at the end of in its own right because should it take off and become a little weighty I don't want this keiki to be pulled up and out and just balance it out a little bit orchids and crafts orchids and crafts where's my tie right there that's good and that's plenty good Nice and solid. Woohoo! And just water them in. Basically, this mount is done for 2022. Everybody gets a good drink, and then it's going back up where it belongs. And there it is, back in its place, reunited, and it feels so good. Right, that is not standard on my channel, but it happens every once in a while when something inspires me and I burst into song, <laughs> practicing my pipes here. Anyway, this is the progress of the mount since I started it last year. If you would like to follow the progress, please consider subscribing to my channel because there will be regular update. This is a long-term project and then you won't miss the updates. And if you would like to see how all this began, the link to the video where I built the mount will be in the description in case you haven't seen it and then you are up to date. Really appreciate your time watching. Thank you so very, very much. Your support is appreciated. I wish you a beautiful day on one condition though, that you stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.